Hello, everybody. Some big breaking news. Tucker Carlson is returning to the airwaves, but he's returning on Twitter uh, in an interesting turn of events that comes in some big legal drama. Before we play you the video, we got to explain the context. One of the reasons that he is relaunching his show on Twitter, the news just broke, and let's go ahead and put it up there on the screen. Tucker Carlson is now accusing Fox News of fraud and a contract breach. So what does that mean? The new letter sent by Tucker Carlson and his team is demanding legal action saying that Fox News violated the terms of Tucker Carlson's contract and then arguing that the non-compete com provision in his contract is no longer valid, freeing him to now launch his own competing show or media enterprise. He, he announced uh, his show will be coming to Twitter and the Twitter platform exclusively, we believe. Currently, uh, there is some speculation that the Twitter move would technically violate the Carlson contract, but the lawyers say that Fox actually is the one who breached the contract first. So for example, the letter was sent by Brian Friedman to Fox's uh, lawyer and to their PR people, and also Rupert Murdoch himself. They say that Fox executives um, specifically have, quote, made material representations or promises to Carlson that were intentionally broken, constituting fraud. Also, they allege that Fox actually broke their agreement with Carlson to not leak his private communications to the media and to not use his private messages, quote, to take any adverse employment action against him. Basically, they are pointing to the leaked text messages from the redacted ones that only Fox is in possession of to the mainstream media, as well as multiple behind the scenes videos videos that clearly were leaked by somebody um, with uh, with knowledge or, I guess, access to the Fox archives. I guess, you know, wonder who that would be. So what they say is that they believe that the representations by the Fox executives amount to enough of a breach of contract, allowing him then to come in and to launch his show on Twitter. The launch is what happened just now, uh, a couple of moments ago. We're going to go ahead and play the full video for you, which includes a denouncement of the mainstream media and an explanation of why Tucker is relaunching his show on Twitter specifically. Let's get to it. Hey, it's Tucker Carlson. You often hear people say the news is full of lies, but most of the time that's not exactly right. Much of what you see on television or read the New York Times is in fact true in the literal sense. It could pass one of the media's own fact checks. Lawyers would be willing to sign off on it. In fact, they may have, but that doesn't make it true. It's not true. At the most basic level, the news you consume is a lie a lie of the stealthiest and most insidious kind. Facts have been withheld on purpose, along with proportion and perspective. You are being manipulated. How does that work? Let's see. If I tell you that a man has been unjustly arrested for armed robbery, that is not, strictly speaking, a lie. He may have been framed. At this point, there's been no trial, so no one can really say. But if I don't mention the fact that the same man has been arrested for the same crime six times before, Am I really informing you? No, I'm not. I'm misleading you. And that's what the news media are doing in every story that matters every day of the week, every week of the year. What's it like to work in a system like that? After more than 30 years in the middle of it, we could tell you stories. The best you can hope for in the news business at this point is the freedom to tell the fullest truth that you can. But there are always limits. And you know that if you bump up against those limits often enough, you will be fired for it. That's not a guess, it's guaranteed. Every person who works in English language media understands that. The rule of what you can't say defines everything. It's filthy, really, and it's utterly corrupting. You can't have a free society if people aren't allowed to say what they think is true. Speech is the fundamental prerequisite for democracy. That's why it's enshrined in the first of our constitutional amendments. Amazingly, as of tonight, there aren't many platforms left that allow free speech. The last big one remaining in the world, the only one, is Twitter, where we are now. Twitter has long served as the place where our national conversation incubates and develops. Twitter is not a partisan site. Everybody's allowed here, and we think that's a good thing. And yet, for the most part, the news that you see analyzed on Twitter comes from media organizations that are themselves thinly disguised propaganda outlets. You see it on cable news, you talk about it on Twitter. The result may feel like a debate, but actually the gatekeepers are still in charge. We think that's a bad system. We know exactly how it works and we're sick of it. 
Starting soon, we'll be bringing a new version of the show we've been doing for the last six and a half years to Twitter. We bring some other things too, which we'll tell you about. But for now, we're just grateful to be here. Free speech is the main right that you have. Without it, you have no others. See you soon. Okay, so there's a lot going on here. Uh, obviously, you know, it's pretty crazy that this is all in the context of a major lawsuit. But second, uh, let's just talk about this in the vacuum on Twitter itself. Uh, fascinating move to launch just on Twitter for a number of reasons. And I don't mean this in a disparaging way, but, uh, you know, traditionally, if you're somebody like who wants a long form podcast or YouTube show, specifically a visual medium, you almost certainly would go to some sort of a streaming platform, which is built kind of with that infrastructure. Twitter video is not built really for this at all. So I'm very curious to see if this is rolled maybe into the Twitter Blue program or if they include in you know, a long form uh, content, playback speed, you know, all these other things that you would never think about for long form uh, media distribution and consumption. Uh, we should remember that the history of long form video on Twitter is, is not good. Um, outside of Periscope and live streaming, AM to DM was a BuzzFeed News uh, morning show concept which horrifically failed um, on Twitter. This was uh, almost you know, several years Years ago, uh, whenever it shut shut down, it's a big gamble not to go in the traditional route of podcasting and of YouTube. Presumptively, though, it's possible um, that this was, you know, maybe the easiest way they thought that they wouldn't violate as much the terms of the contract rather than going fresh out the gate with YouTube um, and with podcast. It's also possible. Elon cut him a fat check, uh, basically becoming a publisher himself, being like, hey, you know, I've got all the money in the world. I stand for free speech. Fox fired you for X, Y, and Z. I'll hire you, and you can uh, report exclusively on my platform. That's pretty interesting. Now, in the context of uh, what I think about all this, and again, I have not spoken to him about this literally at all, so I have no inside knowledge. Uh, what I am curious to see is the level of reach that this will maintain, because I think that this does accomplish something that I know was important to him, and I, I think important for kind of his role in the GOP and media landscape, is Twitter is where the elite conversation happens. Happens, right so if he is exclusively on Twitter then people who are reacting to his clips can do so on Twitter also all the Republican lawmakers can react on Twitter because that is so key to where all the elites hang out and it's actually kind of the perfect place where if you're gonna be having elites on Twitter then it's also a great time uh, to ridicule said elites on Twitter as you will do very likely on his show um, that then raises the question of his cultural relevance where I think this does square the circle somewhat in that way, just because it will be on that central platform. And of course, the reach um, will be massive. I mean, already, I think within, I think, 10 minutes of him posting the video, I almost had over a million views um, that were included on the video. Now, of course, I am not comparing cable news viewers um, to Twitter viewers, which is very, very different. They only have to watch for two seconds. You know, e even YouTube views are, they're, frankly, in my opinion, more comparable, but even then, of course, they're slightly different. You know, all all of these things. That said, um, very clearly this will be able to reach a younger demographic and it's literally unlimited appeal. And also you can watch presumably um, on demand on Twitter at any point that you would want to. Uh, this may also prelude some changes to the overall Twitter platform. So anyways, uh, it's a crazy development. And honestly, it's a gamble. It's a gamble uh, to, to, to go straight onto Twitter. I personally, I would have gone a much more traditional route, YouTube and podcasts, is that's uh, what we do. Uh, but anyways, uh, lots to be said here. The lawsuit itself is going to be exciting uh, in terms of what it means for you know non-competes in the media sphere and also some possible uh, fun stuff that may come out about leaks and text messages and all of that. So We'll continue to cover all that for you. we got a great show for everybody tomorrow on CounterPoints. Make sure you turn into that. And thank you for everybody, premium subscribers who enable our snap reactions that we can do for the crew, for everybody, all of us to just mobilize and get this thing out to you as soon as possible. Uh, we love you. BreakingPoints.com if you're able to support us. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys later.